Hey everybody, today I'm going to be covering holes in Fusion 360. It's a pretty extensive feature, so we're going to rush into it. We have our cube, and the feature right here is holes shortcut H. So we're going to click on that, and there's two different methods in which you can place a hole. We're just going to cover this first one first, at point, and you can click on an actual point. You can see where it has a little arrow or a corner, or you can even just click on the face, and it's going to generate this hole. In the center of the hole, you can drag it around uh, to where you want, as well as you have this drag bar right here to change the diameter, and a drag arrow for the depth. And like always, you have this option to write it in here or is over here as well. One of the cool things with how they have it set up is you can change the, the features of the hole from over here, which is really nice because it gets a little bit modeled up and a little bit messy once you start adding some other, of these other options. So if you can do a top view, you can see that it's creating this hole. And it's taking into account this point as if you were going to be drilling it, which is really nice, especially if you're planning on taking it to a machine shop or making it in a shop um, setting. Um, and so we're going to move on then with the extents, how to choose how far the hole is going to go. Similar to an extrude cut, you can do it up from a distance, you can do it up to an object, or you can just go through everything. I'm not going to go through that anymore since it's explained in uh, simpler features. Um, hole types, you have your simple. You also have a counter bore, which is going to create a, um, a countersink so you can fit uh, your screw in a little bit deeper. So that can be very useful as well, depending on the type of fastener you're going to be using. If you want to keep it hidden or flush, similar with the countersink, um, it does the exact same thing, except it does it at a chamfer, at an angle. And so if you have like a, uh, um, a flathead, an angled flathead, um, you can really get a nice flush um, surface with that um, fastener being in place. You also have four different types. We're going to go back to simple. You have four different types of taps. Um, currently, it's just on the simple, which that means there's nothing there. It's just a normal hole. You can also do a clearance tap. Um, these are based off of, un unlike the simple, simply you're just typing in a measurement. The clearance is going to be taking into account standardized sizes of, of fasteners. And so right now, it's defaulting to an M2, which is an ANSI metric um, screw as a flathead machine screw. You can change all sorts of different types. And you, as you change the different size, it's going to change the diameter based off of the specs that are attached to that fastener. You can also change if it's going to be a normal fit, if it's going to be a close fit or a loose fit, as well as you can change what standard you're going to be working with. Um, me personally, from previous work experiences, ANSI and ISO are very common. I've not used any of the others. I've seen DIN before. Um, but yeah, so it depends on where you are in the world, uh, what industry you're, you're dealing with, but those uh, are a very a variety of standards. Um, we also have a tap, which is nice because it will, again, take into consideration these standard measurements, as well as maybe even the direction, right or left-handed screw. Um, the other nice thing is if we can zoom in, I'm going to get a little bit of a larger hole. You zoom in, you can actually see that it looks like there's thread in there. Physically speaking, it's not modeling the threads. But if I was to click OK, you can actually see that it has like an, the appearance that there are threads. It's actually just an image that's been overlaid on the inside. Um, so if you're going to be 3D printing this, it will only print as a whole. But if you're sending this off to a machine shop, the notation that it's supposed to be tapped is going to be held on to it. So that's just something that's nice to, to remember. Um, you can also have it be a, tape, a tapered, I'm sorry, tapered tapped um, hole as well. Um, and so for that specific type, it didn't like. And so, yeah, so if you're going to put a taper, it's just talking about having that tapered as well. Um, also, you can change the base of the hole. So currently it's pointed like a drill, but you can also change it to a flat, um, which is also really nice. So I'm just going to exit out of that and 
undo that feature and I'm going to do the last part where I'm going to show how you can how you can use the second option from a sketch. And so in this instance I've created this square and I'm going to click multiple locations and I can do all of those previous steps I've talked about um, to now these multiple locations. And so this is a, just a, a nice quick way of doing it. I don't use the whole feature very much, which is my fault really because it is a very powerful and very quick tool to use. Even if you're not planning on drilling anything, but you're just putting a hole in place, and especially as you can see is for like a pattern situation, uh, it's a, a bit quicker uh, method of doing something like this than rather making one hole, making a pad like a sketch, and then doing the, pa the pattern feature. So lots of different ways you can manipulate using the whole feature, but that's really it. Um, so many different applications if you're planning on 3D printing, if you're planning on uh, machining them out, or if you're planning on sending them off to a company to machine, uh, lots of really, really good features built into the feature, into this, um, yeah, in this feature um, to allow for customization. I know this was a little bit of a longer video. There's quite a bit more to cover. Um, if you have any questions, please put them in the below in the comments. And if you've really been liking these videos, please subscribe and we'll see you next time.